Hi, I'm Randy Dick. I uh, ranch uh, close to the village of Homefield, uh, southern Manitoba. I've got uh, 150 plus cows. Um, I, I do a little bit of corn grazing. Um, this is my first year for that, so I don't know if it's a good year to uh, really uh, decide whether or not I will do it again. I'll probably do it again next year, um, possibly for the early part of the winter. Um, just as much for my calves as for my cows. Um, I found that uh, the corn grazing worked well enough. I was feeding quite a few deer and raccoons in the fall with it, so I think that cost me a little bit. I didn't do a very good job of uh, the grain farming aspect of the corn, so my, uh, my yields weren't as good as they should have been for the corn, so my cost per day for the cows was higher than it should have been, but then I'm still learning with the whole uh, whole uh, corn grazing thing. Um, I use some open pollinated corn. Um, I don't really know if it's cost beneficial to hybrid corn. I did have a few rows of hybrid corn planted in it. It was quite a bit better yield. Um, the costs are higher for the hybrid corn, but I think the yields maybe justify the higher costs also. Um, like I said, I didn't make a good job of planting it and everything. I planted the whole crop a bit too heavy so there wasn't as good a cor cob development um, with the corn. So I will, I'll probably try it again. Earlier I was talking about uh, corn grazing. Uh, I had approximately 100 cow cows with a couple of bulls out in the corn field. Uh, there was approximately 50 acres and they were out there 45 days so my cost per day was quite high but I do hope to get the cows out to uh, pick up a little bit of the corn that fell on the ground because there was quite a bit of uh, uh, stalks breaking down we had a lot of wind and like I said I planted the corn quite a bit too heavy so the stems weren't the stalks were not as uh, strong as they should have been so there was a lot of loss because of that, but I'm, I'm hoping that uh, if the snow ever leaves, we'll get another week or maybe maybe more of corn grazing yet. Um, my whole ranch, I um, I try to keep the cattle out in the fields and in the bush as much as possible. I don't bale graze, but I do take out bales every day. Um, put put the bales in different places. Um, try to spread the manure around, usually on eroded hills. Uh, my ranch land was grain farm for many, many years, so the hills don't have as much topsoil as I, I would like. Um, so I'm trying to build it up a little bit. Uh, it's really difficult this year. Um, I could only do this for half, half of this winter just because of the snow that we've got out in the field, so it's almost impossible to go anywhere. So I am feeding my cattle just like everybody else, close to the corrals and uh, closer to home. Um, but then it's an ex extremely uh, difficult year for feeding anyway. Um, metal block, okay. Try to feed the cows out in the hills to get the manure on the hills. Um, the animals that have to stay close to home, the manure, there's obviously a manure pack that has to get cleaned out. Um, I try to put that haul that out to those same spots or, or maybe a little further from the from the farm to get it on the land. Uh, one of the problems I have with the, the, the true bale grazing is I want my nutrients back on the hay fields because that's everything came off of the hay fields. So, um, I, but I, I can't leave my hay bales out in the hay fields because of there's a potential for a second cut. So I end up having to haul the bales out or off the field and into the farmyard. So instead of hauling them all home, hauling them back out again in October, I just keep them at home and haul them out uh, as I need them. And I think it's pretty much the same as bale grazing. It's uh, a little bit more work, or um, it's a little bit of work every day all winter, whereas bale grazing would be more intense, hauling them out in the fall taking the strings off and things like that. Um, I split my cow herd off from my heifers. Um, the cows are getting uh, a lot more roughage. 
uh, more straw and grain this year simply because of the, the, the lack of feed this year. My hay crop was approximately a third of what it should have been. Um, so it's been an expensive year for feeding. My heifers, I've, I'm uh, babysitting them a little better. They get a bit more grain, uh, trying to keep their body condition up. And my uh, open heifer calves, the ones that will be with the bull for the first time this year, are in the corrals at home. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing. Uh, my feeding is very simple. I've got a bucket that I've converted for hauling oats out to the cows. It takes just a few minutes to feed the cattle. Uh, my cost, uh, excluding the snow blowing, which I seem to be doing every other day this year, um, I did uh, keep kind of a tally of it earlier on, and it was approximately a gallon and a half a day uh, for fuel for my diesel tractor. Um, that was just loader work, feeding the cows, the bare basics. Of course, like I said, if I have to do snow blowing, it, it's quite a bit more costly. Um, so that has to be figured into the cost of feeding the cattle. But uh, all in all, it's, I don't think it's too bad. Uh, I still have to start my tractor every day anyway for the calves in the corral. And uh, so to start the tractor for half an hour or for an hour and a half, extra, uh, it's, I don't think it's a, a big problem. Um, I'm glad for the snow for this year. We've had uh, hardly no moisture last summer after July, it just dried up. We only had a couple inches last October, so uh, hopefully the snow will do us some good for this year and uh, we'll get a good crop and good pastures. Uh, thank you.